It's a big year for MTC's Idaho CAP facility and the entire Idaho CAP Department of Correction. One of the significant things that we did this year is um, simplify what we're doing with our treatment programs. Director Kevin Kemp recently asked the Council of State Government to assess every single treatment program offered to inmates at all of his facilities, including Idaho CAP. What they found was nine out of the 12 programs within the state's prison system um, did not have sufficient enough evidence to suggest that they work. So this year, the Idaho Department of Correction began implementing five new core programs. All programs will be research-based and, um, and we'll have them universal in every one of our facilities. It's a huge undertaking and Director Kemp has relied on his strong relationship with MTC to help make the transition smooth. This is where our, our good partnership with MTC comes in. Uh, once again, we sit down with Warden Finn at MTC. We describe what it is that we're, what we're doing and we describe what the vision um, is for the Department of Corrections and MTC is shoulder to shoulder with us. Since MTC began operating Idaho CAP five years ago, it's been very successful. We've programmed over 5,000 offenders and maintained a 94% graduation rate. Deputy Warden of Programs Darcy Acosta says a recent state audit ranked the facility number one for its conflict resolution program and number two for its moral recognition therapy meth matrix writer program. I truly believe in MTC's mission on preparing offenders for reentry. Bethany Siafalo leads two of the facility's new programs. It's really focusing on using the skills while they're here, practicing it both in the classroom and on the units and then coming back in and reporting how it was for them practicing the skills. One program teaches offenders various job skills, including resume writing and interviewing. Bethany says their ultimate goal is to help these individuals succeed in life. I think this is extremely beneficial because these participants could be our neighbors one day. It could be the person that we see in Walmart. It could be the person that is fixing our car and we need them to have the skills and know how to interact with their families and their communities. The five new statewide treatment programs will mean big changes for Idaho CAP and the other facilities in the state. During this transition, we are completing offenders in the previous programming while simultaneously ramping up all of the new classes. That poses some logistical challenges. Class sizes are reduced from 20 offenders to 10 to allow for more one-on-one -on -one instruction. Instead of 40 hours of programming a week, each offender will receive approximately 15 hours, but the length of the courses will be doubled. All this with a goal to keep costs flat for the state and MTC. That's going to absolutely streamline what it is we're doing, make us more efficient, and at the same time incorporate all research-based programs into, uh, into the department. I have two of the first three groups that are going through it, and so far it's been really well received. Daryl Brewer is teaching one of the new cognitive behavioral programs, which incorporates a lot of role playing. I hate hey, for class. I you, need, class. you need to wait. You need to wait there until I'm done. At first, they may be uncomfortable yeah. with some of the role plays and the role modeling that we're asking them to do. But much of the time, they're volunteering to step up and do the role playing. I've found that the inmates are a lot more receptive to the programming and to the role plays than what I had originally anticipated. Idaho CAP is working hard to make the switch to the new curricula. The transition has many moving parts and we're really blessed to have a programs team that exemplifies the bionic culture. It's that commitment that makes the facility shine within the state. Idaho CAP has always gone above and beyond. Just look at some of the other activities they've put in place to keep offenders engaged. Last year, offenders grew 19,000 sagebrush plants, which were later used in Idaho and Oregon to restore natural habitat and build the ecosystem. This year, they'll grow 7,500 plants. We do all the local high school sports, sports posters, Timberline, Boise. Um, the facility also provides offenders with meaningful activities like this employment workshop. Offenders are also planting flowers that will be donated to a local middle school. And check out these cards made by offenders. They'll be donated along with flowers to a local senior center. As you can see, it's a really busy time for CAP with a lot of new and exciting things in the works. We march on and continue to provide exceptional service to our customer while fulfilling our mission in the community.